All eyes on Daniel Bard as he makes his way to the bullpen for his first ever start in the major leagues. It's game two of the three game series between the Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, as always, joined by Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, the Red Sox tonight are looking to make it two in a row over the Toronto Blue Jays. All offseason, we heard about Daniel Bard getting ready to be in the rotation. Well, in spring training, he had mixed results as we look at some of the numbers for Bard during the spring, which were good and bad at times. Bard made five starts this spring and won two of them, averaging just over four innings per start. He held opponents just a 192 batting average. His first Major League regular season start comes after four years as a reliever in the Red Sox system. The last three, of course, in the bigs. His 192 outings are the most games in relief to begin a major league career with Boston prior to making a start. And today be his 22nd career appearance against the Toronto Blue Jays. As we welcome in Jerry Remy and Jerry, last night the Red Sox, a much needed victory here in Toronto. Well, certainly nice to see the Red Sox get a win finally in that uh, in the game last night here in Toronto and spoil you know, a big crowd here to uh, spoil their hopes of the Toronto Blue Jays on game one. But the big contributor last night offensively for the Red Sox was Dustin Pedroia. He was outstanding. And watch the location of the pitches that he hits. First of all, a fastball that's inside that he turns on for his first home run of the season, La Luna, as you called it. And and look at this late in the ball game. A fastball up around his neck that he's able to somehow keep in fair territory and get a double. Pedroia certainly is the hot and soul of this Red Sox ball club. And he proved it over, over and over again and again last night. When the Red Sox nearly, really needed some offense, he was there to give it to him. Well, tonight, a little change in the Red Sox lineup. we got Nick Punto in the game at shortstop for Boston. He had three RBIs in his last start. Here in the Red Sox will try to take game two next. New England Subaru dealers and by Southwest Airlines. Welcome back to the Rogers Center where the roof is closed once again tonight and all eyes certainly on Daniel Barr. This has been a much anticipated start to say the least here. Well, this is, goes back to the winter time when Daniel Barr said that he wanted to be a starting pitch. The Red Sox granted his wish in spring training. It was kind of an up and down spring. I think one of the things that was a concern in spring training for Bob was the amount of walks that he had. And that's one thing that he'd be trying to certainly improve on in his first game of the season. But this is a moment he's been waiting for for a long time. Also threw a lot of pitches early in a lot of those starts. Got deep into the pitch count during the spring training efforts. So we'll see how that translates tonight into his first major league start here. And probably seems like forever for him. The Red Sox, of course, going to Washington first, then Detroit, and now Toronto after leaving Florida so it's been a while and especially with everything that's going on with this ball club in the first four games of the season the Red Sox finally winning one yesterday for Bobby Valentine and uh, that kind of you kind of felt a sense of relief today when you walked into the clubhouse okay we got that first one now let's move on Red Sox had to come from behind Bobby Valentine saying today boy it'd be great to play with a lead once in a while they really have not had that opportunity except for late in the game a couple of different times in Detroit is now the Toronto Blue Jays take the field here tonight from the Rogers Center. As they do, let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup. It's brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off in center field with Dustin Pedroia at second base. Adrian Gonzalez at first base bats third with David Ortiz at DH. Kevin Euclid at third base. Ryan Sweeney's in right field. He bats sixth with Cody Ross in left field. Jared Saltalamacchia does the catching. He bats eighth. And Nick Punto in there at shortstop, as we mentioned, batting ninth for the Red Sox. And on the mound tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays is Kyle Drabeck. Who last year was four and five in 18 appearances, 14 starts for the Toronto Blue Jays. An ERA up over six last year. Actually walked more than he struck out. And opponents sitting at 289 against him. Marks the second straight season. Drabeck has began the year in the Blue Jays rotation. The Toronto defense is brought to you by the new film from 20th Century Fox, the Three Stooges. They've made three errors in four games so far this season. Brett Lorry will be at third base. You know, let's come out of the shortstop. Kelly Johnson at second, and Adam Flynn, the first baseman. Left to right, Eric Fames, Colby Rasmus, and Jose Batista, and J.P. Aaron Sevilla doing the catching with Brayback. Well, the umpiring crew tonight, Tim McClellan has the play calling the balls and strikes. He's the crew chief with Ted Barrett at first base, Ryan Rungi at second base, and Marvin Hudson is the umpire at third. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos.
little different atmosphere here tonight, Jerry, in game two. <laughs> well, we kind of expected that. A full house here last night, a wild crowd for the opener, but uh, it is uh, cut considerably for game two uh, and here at home for the Toronto Blue Jays. Very nearly 50,000 people were here last night as the Red Sox and Blue Jays at the Blue Jays home schedule underway and things did not go well for the Jays. Their new closer has blown two straight saves and Red Sox happy to grab their first win of the year. Well, here's Ellsbury off to a two for 17 start. He is hitting at 118 to begin the year as it'll be Ellsbury, Pedroia, and Gonzalez here in the first inning. Kyle Drabeck ready with his first pitch of the game. And is in there for strike one and one away. 95 miles an hour for Drabeck. Fastball, curveball, cutter, and a change. The 0 1 missing, and it evens at 1 and 1. And a very unusual number for a starting pitcher. Number four he wears on his back. Broken back, grounded left side, cut off by Lauren Spins and fires to get the out at first. That was a two seam 95 mile an hour fastball that uh, pounded into the ground by Jacoby Ellsbury. Well, here's what we got coming up tonight, Jerry. We're going to come right inside the booth and get a look. What a thrill that's live. going to be for the we're folks at home. We're going to do it live, too. We're not going to just tape it. We're going to do it live. Oh, we are? Oh, yeah. And the Bard's going to talk about tennis. And the Rays of the Tigers with some highlights a little bit later on that game. But uh, I don't think we've been to the booth live while we've been on before, except for that front shot that's like right in our face at home. No, this is a first. This will be from behind, kind of looking at uh, what we have in front of us and right inside. This is television genius. Yes, it is. It's right here on Nessa. Dustin Pedroia was terrific last night and really got the Red Sox going. This is by far the largest broadcast booth we work in. It certainly is. It's one of the highest and one of the biggest. You could actually live up here. It's it's the size of a condominium. Yeah, it really is. Pedroia fouls it off to the right. In fact, that curtain behind us. It's really only about the halfway mark of the booth. It actually goes even further. There's like another room back there. Well, we'll show you behind the curtain yes. when uh, when they come up. Uh, we'll see what's behind the curtain. There's stuff back there. We have all kinds of stuff that we have added to the booth. Even though we're here, what nine nights a year, we have a lot of stuff in here that is ours. We're going to show you later too. One two pitch is strike three. And Pedroia is the first strikeout for Drayback of the night. Now well, Dustin didn't like the call. Remember last night the two pitches he hit were inside. This time Brabeck goes outside part of the plate and a good pitch for the second out of the inning. So two down for Adrian Gonzalez. Broken bat. And the shift is on and it's caught. Well, you know, Escobar in the first inning. It's a one, two, three, first. The Jays are coming up from Toronto. Last year, 70 appearances for the Red Sox out of the pen. It was two and nine last year with a 3.33 earned run average, logged 73 innings. Okay, that's one of the questions I have is. 73 innings uh, last year, and now if he stays in rotation this year, you're thinking 150 to 180, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think that, I think that that's a fair don with their asking for out of Daniel Bard this year if he stays in the rotation all season long. And Bard himself mentioned the fact that uh, this is quickly by Euclid, who is in at third, and it's to left field. Escobar aboard with a base hit to get it started. Well, certainly Escobar, who has been 0 for 6 in his career against Bard, jumps on the first pitch. That fastball inside at 93 miles an hour. That's going to be the biggest difference I think you see from Bard. You're not going to see too many of those 98, 99 mile an hour fastballs as a starting pitcher. Lead runner on here for the Jays. 
Kelly Johnson, the second baseman, came over from the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Aaron Hill, John McDonald deal last year. As he spins out of the way, a ball one. Getting back to that broad point that I was going to make, the fact that he said that he thinks this is going to be easier on his arm than, than being in the bullpen, which was very taxing. You know, sometimes you're up warming up and you don't get into a ball game. Other times you are in the game. This is popped up, sending Quinto to the outfield. And the Red Sox shortstop puts it away for the first out. Let's check out the Blue Jays starting nine. The lineup brought to you by George Furniture. In El Escobar at shortstop with Kelly Johnson at second base. Jose Bautista in right field. Adam Lind at first base with Edwin Encarnacion, the DH. Brett Laurie's at third base. Eric Thames in left. J.P. Aaron Sebia does the catching. And Kobe Rasmus made a great grab last night in center field. Bats ninth. Bautista was 0 for 4 in last night's game and really kept at bay by the Red Sox pitching staff. As he takes ball one. You know, Bart was saying that it's going to be difficult for him to really get used to what to do with the rest of his life once he makes this start. He's got the next four days to uh, really figure out what his new routine is to get better at it as uh, spring training went along and kind of watch the other starters to see how they went about their business. But it's a whole different thing when you're not expecting to be in every game like he has been in the past. Now, certainly a different mindset. You know, have his off day, he'll have his throw day, workouts in between starts. Uh, I think that's something he'll get used to very quickly. Lead at first for Escobar. And a swing and a miss. Two and one. 97 that time from Bard. Red Sox have done a good job keeping the ball away from the power of Bautista so far in this series. A 2 0 fastball there from Bard away. Although Dubron last night did get him on a, on a breaking ball that was inside after staying away from him most of the night. I think he went around. He did. And it evens to two and two. There seemed to be, and we talked about it coming into the season, that Bart certainly needed a third pitch, a great fastball on the slider that we saw for a long time. And he would occasionally use the changeup out of the bullpen. But some reluctance it seemed in the first couple of starts for him to use that change up in spring training. Yeah I think he was just at that time trying to get his rhythm right you know with the working out of the wind up all the time and I think he's got a good change up. I mean there's, there's not a drastic difference between his fastball and change up but I think there's certainly enough there. The key is will he be able to use it against right handed hitters. Outside full count. He's up the leadoff base hit to Escobar. Gets Johnson to pop out. Now full count to Bautista with Adam Lind waiting on deck. Bautista gets time and backs out. Rod shaking off a number of pitches. Looks like he wanted to go with a sinking fastball inside. What do you got, Mark? What do you got? Bautista to right. On the move is Sweeney. And he'll get there to make the catch for out number two as Escobar gets back to the bag at first. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Red Sox have made two errors in their four games. Kevin Euclid will be at third base. Nick Punto gets the start at shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second and Adrian Gonzalez the first baseman. Left to right Cody Ross, Jacoby Ellsbury and Ryan Sweeney. And Jared Salt are doing the catching for Daniel Barr. Two down Escobar at first base and Adam Lynn the batter first baseman. Take a look at that last pitch to Batista. He wanted to go inside with the fastball. He left it out over the plate. But Batista with the uh, semi line drive to right field for the out. 0 for 5 so far in the series. Quiet series against Boston. Lindell foul it back, and it's 0 2. 
the numbers for Lind out of the gate. And 20 plus home runs for the third consecutive year last year, despite playing in just 125 games. Ball one, one and two, and Bard operating at 97 miles an hour. The line out to right for Bautista was at 98 miles an hour, so he is still getting up there here in the first inning where we're used to seeing him at times out of the pen. That might be some first uh, inning adrenaline going for him right now. On the ground and a fair ball. Oh, the late cut that gets inside the line. Escobar is headed for third base if he stopped there. It's a double for Adam Lind, and it's second and third with two outs for the Jays. Now, Adam Lind very late on this fastball from Barn. Fastball up and in, and he shoots it down that third base line. Good hustle and good play by Cody Ross out in left field to quickly. Get this ball back in and hole Escobar at third base. So the double, but no run scores. So a spot here for Edwin and Carnacio on the DH with second and third, two down. Can I see all oh, this swing and a miss at the fastball for strike one? 250 start for Encarnacion. It's been the primary DH. Saw time at third at first last year, but right now you got Brett Laurie at third on a regular basis and Lind at first, so this will be the spot for the most part for Encarnacion. Fooled and it's 0 and 2. Staying with the hard stuff for the two men in scoring position, at least on the first two pitches. Both fastballs from Bard. Last one at 96. Let a high. Escobar at third, Lind at second, two down in the first. Didn't miss by much, and it's one and two. Sixteen pitches here in the first inning so far for Barr, trying to get out of this first unscathed. Comes Escobar and the Blue Jays break on top one to nothing. It's a base hit for Encarnacion. Uh, even if Punto comes up with this clean on the back end, he's not going to have a play at first base on Encarnacion. You'll see how far he has to go to make this play. One, two, three steps, and then the, the then a slide. And even if he comes with that clean, he's not going to have a play. The only play he might have had if he comes clean is a play at third base. So first and third, two down, and a chance here for Brett Laurie. Off to a 232 start on the season, the third baseman for the Jays. Runner goes at first as there is ball one. Actually, it's a strike. Great call from Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire. No throw from Salta Lamacchia. I think the Red Sox had no intentions of throwing through. You can see uh, Pedroia going there, but it looked like Salta Lamacchia, knowing he had no chance to get that runner at second base, made no attempt to even try to throw it there. So, two in scoring position with two down. 
And it's 0 1 to Lori. Owen oh 2 on the breaking ball that time for Bard. Wind at third and Canacion at second. Two outs, a run in. Lori strikes out. Back to the slider again to get him. One run for the Jays. We're done with one in Toronto. Fires through his first inning as a major league starter. Oakland A's will visit Boston for the second home stand of the season, April 30th, May 1st and 2nd. Get your tickets now for both of these matchups at RedSox.com slash tickets. Kyle Drebeck's got a 1-0 advantage as we start the second inning. As the Jays go into their shift on the right side. With David Ortiz leading it off. And David takes strike one. And way out in right field, the, the guy that's out there is the third baseman, Brett Lowry. And he is very deep in the outfield. They did this with Aaron Hill for a number of years as well here in Toronto. This was pretty much their standard defense for David Ortiz. That is strike two, and it's one and two. One of our key matchup brought to you by New England Acura Dealers. Ortiz with good success against Drabeck includes two home runs in his career against Kyle Drabeck. Evens at two and two. Four sixty seven start to the season for Big Poppy. Swing and a miss, and Ortiz strikes out. It's a second K for Drebeck. One down in the second inning. Well, both strikeouts for Drebeck coming on the fastball. One to Dustin Pedroia. Now this one inside. To David Ortiz might not have been a strike, but Ortiz swings, no contact, and the Drebeck's second strike out of the evening. One down, four in a row, retired by Drebeck to begin his night, and it brings up Kevin Euclid. Mentioned that uh, Drebeck was just four and six a year ago for the Blue Jays. And he's looking at some tough numbers for Euclid out of the gate, 0 for 12. Drebeck really was not on the radar for the Jays in their rotation heading into spring training. It's kind of like Felix Dubron in a way in that he won his way into the rotation. They really did not have him in the top five, but he pitched so well during the spring. And here he is making the start as their fifth starter to begin the year, at least to start the year in the rotation. And he's only 24 years old. And he's from the Woodlands, Texas. And yeah, parts of now three years in Toronto. Euclid to right with some authority. Batista going back. It's over his head. It'll one hop the wall. Euclid's thinking too. Batista's got a great arm and the throw is not going to be in time. As Euclid gets his first hit of the year. It's a double here in the second inning. And good opposite field power shown there by Euclid. You mentioned it Don. His first hit of the season. And that has to take a load off right there for Kevin Euclid. A line shot quickly up over the head of Jose Batista. Batista, as you mentioned, a very strong throwing arm, but Euclid safely in the second base with a double. So one out, Euclid in scoring position, and it brings up Ryan Sweeney. Sweeney's come up with some big hits here in the early going for the Red Sox. A slow spring, but 467 average to begin his Red Sox career during the regular season. As he takes ball one. Coming up next half inning, we'll talk a little tennis with Jenny Dell.
Sweeney last night driving in the go ahead run in the ninth inning. So it's safely in each of his first four games with the Red Sox and jumps ahead 2 0. Oh. And at 256 during the spring, he started spring training going 0 for his first 14. And he didn't start to heat it up until the last week of spring training and just kind of rolled it into the regular season. That's a strike and it's two and one. Play all three outfield positions as he did a year ago with the Oakland A's. Also is their DH on occasion. Sweeney was all over the Oakland A's lineup last year led off at times. This body didn't hit was fourth and ninth in last year's Oakland A's lineup a very young team. That's ball four inside and he earns the walk first free pass for Drebeck. We talked about the problems he's had with the walk in the pass and that's the first of the night. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Eastern Bank. At Eastern Bank were made of historic milestones. And now our home team has reached one of its own. Congratulations on this special anniversary from one of Boston's institutions to another. One out, two on. And it brings up Cody Ross. Ross getting the start in left field. Two for 12 start to his season. Averages out to 167 on the year. Ross kind of the reverse of Sweeney in that he was red hot during the spring and then started to quiet down towards the end of spring and it's been a quiet start to the regular season. He led the Red Sox with six home runs, 16 RBIs, and an 826 slugging percentage during spring training of 17 games. Now the one positive thing for Cody Ross he had a couple of a bat last night where he really hit the ball hard uh, one time up the middle for a base hit another time to the shortstop. So hopefully that's uh, the type of thing they can get him going. Well Red Sox nation if you need medical care at Fenway Park visit the Beth Israel Deaconess first aid stand behind section 12. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox visit them at BIDMC.org. Blue Jays getting a run in the home half of the first inning. Red Sox trying to answer here in the second inning. And Ross is ahead 3 0. Ross taken all the way and takes strike one. Ross at this point, three balls, one strike count, still looking for a ball middle in. Jared Saltalamak here on deck. That is on the corner to strike two, full count. Yeah, that's not the kind of pitch you want to swing at in a 3 1 count. Nasty fastball outside part of the plate. Woody Ross's power is middle in. One out, two on, full count to Ross. Euclid's at second, Sweeney at first. Ross with a foul tip to stay alive. Mentioned it off the top, more walks than strikeouts for Drebeck last year. 55 walks to 51 strikeouts. Even a triple A who's similar. 41 walks to 45 Ks. Still walks a 
real problem for Drebeck. He's already walked one in this inning. Ross will foul it off. Beck, who came over from the Philadelphia Phillies in the deal for Roy Halladay in December of 2009. Ready with his 30th pitch. And he strikes out Cody Ross. Third strikeout for Drebeck, two down. All three strikeouts for Drebeck so far coming on the fastball, and this one appeared to be out of the strike zone. Up and away from Cody Ross, uh, but trying to be protected with two strikes. So two down, two on, and a chance here for Jared Saltalamacchia. One for ten so far to start the season. Mentioned that uh, Drebeck came over from the Phillies. He was their first round pick and 18th overall. In 2006, and a big part of the Roy Holiday deal. It's ball one to Salta Lamacchia. He's off and takes ball two, two and zero. Oh, as Drebeck is behind again. Salta Lamaki at 2:22 spring training in 17 games. And this year marked his second straight opening day start behind the plate for the Red Sox. He bats with Euclid at second, Sweeney at first, and two down. Strike one. Twenty five pitches so far in the inning for Drebeck who's had to battle but so far has not surrendered a run. Two and two inside corner. Took a little bit off the fastball that time at ninety three. He's been operating around ninety five. Maybe a little cutter that time uh, down and in on Salt Lamacchia. Walter well, Lamaki is spinning out of the way, but he takes strike three. It's a bad news from Tim McClellan. Trebek strikes out the side. The Red Sox strand a pair. We'll find out how tennis is like baseball when we come back. We'll ask him if this might be the only start of the year for Daniel Bard. All begins at 6 a.m. tomorrow right here on Nesson and on 93.7 FM WEEI. Daniel Bard into his second inning as a major league starter. Deals with Eric Thames, J.P. Aaron C.B. and Kobe Rasmus. The Blue Jays on top, one nothing. Thames got into the game last night, did not start for the Jays, but came in defensively and was in left field by games end. He's off to a two for 13 start on the year. We saw Rajay Davis get the start in left field in last night's home opener for the Blue Jays. Twelve home runs for Thames last year, who's a rookie, had 24 doubles and five triples. First Toronto rookie to score at least five triples and ten home runs. It's on the ground to short. Punto rounds in behind it. And throws out Thames. So one down in the second inning, and it'll bring up JP Aaron Sebia. 
Jerry, it seemed like there was a great deal of relief in the Red Sox clubhouse today after last night's win. I know it's only one win, but yeah, well, that first one's big. It, sure, it certainly was. It was more relaxed. You could, you know, you could kind of sense that just walking around. And they finally got that first one under their belt, especially after the very disappointing loss on Sunday. You know, and uh, to get that first one's always good. Uh, much more relaxed atmosphere. You get the, you know, you get that wind under your belt, and you just start playing the season now. But. Uh, it's a, you know, I've been on teams like that that you get off to a very slow start, you know, the first couple of games, and it just seems like, you know, when are we finally going to win one? We went through this last year with the Red Sox, starting mm -hmm. off 0 and 6. That was a tough one. The yeah. first three in Texas, the, and then the first. The greatest three. team ever. Yes, to go 0 and 6 right out of the gate, 2 and 10, and it's been well documented. And certainly they wanted to get off. That was the big thing, get off to a great start this year, and to get all that, and all of a sudden you're 0 and 3. We played a very good Detroit Tigers team. And they come in here last night, an atmosphere that was just spectacular last night, loud here in Toronto. And Red Sox come away with a win in the end for Bobby Valentine as first as the skipper of the Boston Red Sox. And try to make it two in a row. They trail one nothing right now with one out and you know one pitch coming to Aaron Sebia. Low start for Aaron Sebia, hitting at 067 to begin the year. Does have a home run. And a swing and a miss on a fastball up one and two. Aaron Sebia had 23 home runs in his rookie season, third most by a rookie catcher in Major League history, and then Mike Piazza. Matt Noakes and Giovanni Soto swing and a miss. Breaking ball gets him to strike him out. And that's the second time Bard's gone to it for a strikeout. Two down. Yeah, got Lowry back in the first thing on a slider. Now a nasty hard slider right here by Bard off the outside edge and picks up the strikeout to Aaron Sebia. Bard with two different types of sliders. The one. Hard one like you just saw, and then a one that's a little bit slower with a little more loop in it. Not quite a curveball, but a slower slider. Two down for Kobe Rasmus, and he'll hit on the ground down to Gonzalez, who will take it to the bag himself. It's a nine pitch inning for Bard, and it's a one, two, three inning at that. And Jays have a one nothing lead. Proud sponsor of opening week baseball. Third inning in Toronto. The Blue Jays on top, one to nothing. Nick Punto, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Dustin Pedroia to bat here in the third inning. Red Sox with one hit. Did threaten in the second inning. They had two on with one out when. Slayback really bared down. He was able to strike out Cody Ross, struck out Jared Saltalamaki, and through two innings, Drebeck has four strikeouts. That was a nice starting debut for Nick Punto, and a bit of a surprise, I would say, on Sunday, Jerry, that he was leading off. Everybody, everybody made a big deal about the lack of success he had as a leadoff man in St. Louis. But the fact is, he was an igniter uh, for the Red Sox in that spot. When he got his first start over the weekend. Turned out to be his third career game with at least three hits. As he looks at strike two, this was Sunday, Easter Sunday in Detroit. Leading off, and he was able to drive in one of the big runs in this contest. Drove in a total of three runs in the ballgame. That's ninth in tonight's game. Here's a pop up down the left field line. Lori with a long run, but it'll fall foul. Sent it down to Jenny Dell. And Daniel Bard has said it time and time again that the biggest challenge, making the jump from the pen to the rotation, has been mastering the mental aspect needed to become a successful starter. It was a weird comparison, but he compared it to pitching to, to tennis. And when you go up like 40 love on somebody and you kind of relax and you're like, all right, I got this in the bag. And then before you know it, it's 40 40. And I think the way that works for me is, you know, I got through five innings solid the other day and I kind of saw the finish line. And not that I was just going through the motions, but there's not that quite that same intensity. And it's just, uh, it's 
starting requires a longer, longer term focus. You know, it's not 10 minutes and it's over like it was for me in the past. So um, just kind of staying, keeping your nose down and grinding through it until they tell you you're done. Although this is his first major league start, Bart is no stranger to this frame of mind. As you may know, he served as a starter in college at the University of North Carolina and started in his first year in the Sox minor league system. Bard said, it's something I've always thought I could do once I proved to myself I could consistently get hitters out at this level. And Don, he added that he has put in a lot of hard work to get here. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. Uh, to Bard through the first two innings of his first major league start. See the numbers in 22 games in the minors the last time that he was a starter in the Red Sox system. This will hit off Tim McClellan, one plate umpire who already got uh, hit earlier and he's been hit again. Did you ever play tennis? Uh, the, uh, the analogy uh, between tennis I, and starting? I was wondering where they were going with that, but uh, I, I did understand the analogy because usually when I get up 40 40, it's deuce before you know it. Exactly. It's, uh, yeah, right exactly. Action. I used to love to play tennis, that was a lot of fun. I even went to tennis camp as a kid. Did you really? Yes, I did. In the summers in New Hampshire. It was a strong part of your game. I would say my backhand was very good. Your backhand? Yeah, I was a two-handed backhand guy, so it came back with power right at you. It was in your face. One on <laughs> Chopped on two hops to Johnson at second. And there's two outs. What would you say your power game was? Uh, power. I, I used oh. to try to finish points as quickly as possible. <laughs> Why doesn't that shock me? You want it over immediately. I wanted it over quickly. <laughs> no patience. No, absolutely no patience at all. I didn't like the back and forth volley at all. No, let's get just, this over with. I'm going to drive it. I'm just going to hit it as hard as yeah. I can. Try to find a corner where you can't get to it. The worst part of my game? Serving. I don't like serving. I don't see you as a good server. No, terrible. No. Always get to that second one. Oh, that's just a, it's like so much pressure. Yeah. Just trying to get it over. <laughs> <laughs> Badminton. Just trying to please get over the net. And then you got a guy on the other side yeah. just whacking just it down your throat. Slamming it right back at you. So, yeah, I you know, really didn't go too far. The 1 0 to Pedroia struck out first time up and now hits one on the ground to Escobar at short. That'll wrap up the top of the third inning, and our tennis conversation comes to an end. We'll get some highlights from Detroit when we come back. Last half of the third inning back at the Rogers Center in Toronto. It's 1 0 Blue Jays. And Al Escobar leading it off for the Jays, top of their order. And he gets straightened up with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Well, who is 4 0? Battle of. 3 0 teams, Tampa Bay and Detroit going head to head this afternoon in Detroit. The Tigers had yesterday off after sweeping the Red Sox in the three game weekend series in Detroit. And back in action today. Check in with Tom Karen and get the latest on that. Escobar lays off. I think he laid off. They wanted him to check, and Ted Barrett said he didn't go around. One more look from the side on that last slider from Daniel Bard and a good call by the umpires. In the air down the right field line it'll find its way foul. Let's set it to Tom Karen for a game break TC. All right, Tom, thanks very much. Bobby Valentine said that if they continue to play that way, they're going to win every game all year. <laughs> this is into center field. Renel Escobar has got his second hit of the night. He is two for two. Yeah, actually got jammed on that pitch by Daniel Barr. That fastball running back in, in the hands of Escobar, but he's able to somehow muscle that ball in the center field for the base hit. That fastball inside, not a bad pitch at all by Barr. But better hitting by Escobar. Well, lead runner on here for the Jays second time in three innings. And here's Kelly Johnson. He popped out to the shortstop in the first. And 
in there for strike one to Johnson. Throw to first and a kind of a rising fastball. Well, Jerry, I'm very excited about this uh, inside look we're going to have tonight. Last night we saw the Red Sox clubhouse. Tonight we're going to see our office. Yeah. This, television Studio One. This is it. Number one right here. This is a visiting television booth in Toronto. This is where we work. And we are going to get an in depth look like never seen before. Next inning. And I'm very proud to say that there are parts of this booth, I mean, the other guys come in, they come out. All the other teams in the league, the broadcast teams. But you and I have left a lasting impression on this booth. There are things we've added in this booth that nobody else has. Uh, we are here nine times. I don't think I've offered anything here. Oh, right I now. disagree. Look over your shoulder. I believe that is your oh, creation over there. Yeah, so that's correct. We're not, not going to say anything. That's correct. There are three things in this booth that you and I have added. I can't think of anything in this booth that anybody else has added, like the Yankees or... Oakland A's I, I would agree or, with it. I would agree with it. You know, there's been some copycats. Oh, yeah. This is into right field, a base hit for Kelly Johnson, and it's first and second now with nobody out. Now, back to back singles. The first one, a very good pitch that Escobar had uh, a base hit on. Now, this fastball stays out over the plate, and Kelly Johnson able to pull it. He got out to Sweeney so quickly that Escobar had to stay at second base. This is after four in a row were retired by Bart. A better start here for the Jays in the third. A single to center, a single to right, and now you got to deal with Jose Bautista. He flied out to right field first time up. It's more of a line drive. But 0 for 5 so far in the series. Kind of scary that he is likely due. In tight at 96, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. 31-year-old Jose Bautista from Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, signed an extension here with the Jays. It'll take him through 2015. Fortieth pitch for Bard will have to wait. So spiraled off the backside. Escobar at second, Johnson at first, and Bard in a jam here in the third. Three and oh. Kind of year to Batista have last year. Here it is. 302 average, 43 home runs to set the pace in the American League. Also, the walks, that was tops two, and the slugging percentage. Remember, you had the 54 home runs the year before. Swinging 3 0, and he fouls it back and out of play. 97 on the fastball, green light. Green light, and he got the fastball obviously on the 3 0 count and fouled it straight back. Ooh, right in the power zone, right there, too, for Batista. That's a strike, and Batista gets the late news with the rest of us from Tim McClellan. He enjoys the tardiness of each of his calls. Right at the bottom of the strike zone, a good call nonetheless by McClellan. It did take him some time to finally make it.
swing and a miss. He struck him out. Foul tipped into the catcher's mid. It's a third strikeout for Barden. A big one. One down. Now Bond goes right after Batista with the fastball at 97. A little bit above the belt. Batista still upset at the call before, and uh, that time no contact. But that call before was a good pitch. Well, Bard, who had fallen behind Bautista 3 0, battles back and strikes him out, picks up his third K. Two on, one away now for Adam Lind. In there for strike one. Lind with a double in the first inning. Blue Jays with five hits. The Red Sox so far have been held to one through the first three. It's 0 and 2. I don't think Bard has featured a changeup yet in this game. It's been mostly fastballs and sliders from Daniel Bard. Slider again right here and a lunging swing by Adam Lynn fouls it off. Is it that he is holding it later or is it that he is not comfortable with it? Well, it could be that he's just waiting, you know, start some the second time through the lineup. No two is ripped into center field. The base hit. Escobar being waved around. Throw cut off and a run in. Two nothing Blue Jays. Adam Lynn with his second hit produces the second Toronto run. Hell a mistake there. Nonetheless, uh, you know, 0 and 2 count. And Bond just throws too good of a pitch right there. A fastball, line shot up the middle. And 2 nothing lead for the Jays. Never miss another Sox game. Go to Nesson.com slash schedule now to download the full season schedule onto your favorite calendar program. At home, in the office, or on the go. We'll remind you when the game is on. Download it now at Nesson.com slash schedule. Well, we're here at the Rogers Center in Toronto. Don Orsillo, Jerry Remy, and Jenny Dell bring you Boston Red Sox baseball in high definition. And in Dolby Digital, 5.1 surround sound here on Nesson. Coordinating producer of Red Sox baseball is Russ Ken. Senior coordinating director is Michael Narachi. And our associate producer is Jim White. Glad you have joined us here tonight in Toronto for game two of the series. You'll be coming in the booth next inning. We'll get a look at our office here in Toronto. Two on, one away for Edwin and Carnacion. And he takes ball one. And running onto the field from the right field corner. And he's headed out to center field, so we'll have a delay. The Amica Pit Zone is brought to you by Amica Insurance. Amica Insurance is not just how you're covered, it's how you treat it. And we'll take a look at the four batters uh, this inning. Escobar with a base hit in on the hands. Johnson with a base hit pulling it in that hole between first and second. The strikeout to Batista and an 0-2 fastball that's lined up the middle by Adam Lynn. And one run scoring for the Jays. Have corralled the fan who ran around a long time. Finally got him around the third base area. He was headed off. It's quite an outfit he's got on. Yes. He decided not to wear one.
want to possess one to want to do that. I, mean, uh, I don't know, Don. I, I really don't. Never crossed your mind at any point? Uh, no, it never game has, you, no. Game you were at? Especially to take your pants off right. and almost trip all over them <laughs> yes. as you're running around the field. You didn't really think it through? No. No. <laughs> Now the three Stooges. We just had one Stooge around yes. the field. And we're still taking some time getting him off. If I was him, I'd run off looking like that. Yes. So Barb will take some warm-up tosses here. Here are the runners: Kelly Johnson at second base, Adam Lind at first. One out. Run in here for the Jays on top. Two nothing. That is ball one. There is action in the Red Sox pen already. Justin Thomas is up in the pen, the left hander. All right, at 48 pitches. Swing and a miss. And it's two and one now to Encarnacion, who reached on an infield hit, picked up an RBI in the first inning. Fiftieth pitch for Bart, and it is just outside. And that slider did not miss by very much at all. That's a pitch that Bart wanted and needed right now. In the air to center field, Ellsbury tracks it, comes in on it, and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So two outs, two on, and Brett Laurie coming up. That ball away, not a, not a very good pitch right there for Encarnacion in to swing at once he's ahead in the count like he was. Really swung at a pitcher's pitch right there, a nasty fastball down and away. And you can see that Encarnacion was not very happy with that swing. Two on, two down, and that takes us to Brett Laurie, who struck out swinging in the first inning. Looks at strike one. Three strikeouts in the game for Bard. He's not walked anybody. Ground ball right side well placed in the right field a base hit Johnson being waved around the throw from Sweeney is going to be not in time. Blue Jays take a three nothing lead. Brett Lurie drives in the third Toronto run. Well Lurie struck out at a, a breaking ball a slider back in the first inning but this time he gets the fastball from Barn a fastball away and he just takes it. To the opposite field. Looked like the play was going to be close to the plate. It was close, but uh, the run does score as the foot comes down on the plate. Partially blocked by Salt to Lamacchia, but uh, did get the foot on the plate. Two on, two down. And Eric Thames is the batter. As Bob McClure to the phone, they had Justin Thomas warming in the pen. Ames takes a look at ball one. There's a change up from Bond. I believe that's the first one he's featured tonight. Change up at 88 miles an hour, just missing a little bit low. So that is his 54th pitch and just the first change up in your estimation. I, be I believe so. Foul down the left field line, and it's one and one. Pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Two and two thirds, seven hits, three runs so far. He's not walked anybody. Struck out three. 
Uh, the Jays getting to him for a run in the first and two so far in the third. That's a strike and it's one and two. Only four of 16 Blue Jays to bat have swung at the first pitch. They're trying to drive that pitch count up for Bart. And a swing there as he strikes out, does Thames to end the inning. We will come up here and take a look inside the broadcast booth. When we come back. It's a three nothing Jays lead. These are a popular summer weekend day with an exciting game this season. To create your own unique standing room only packs. See two great games for as little as forty dollars. Get your tickets today at RedSox.com/slash SRO packs. Well, it's the top of the fourth inning. Three nothing Toronto Blue Jays on top. And Jerry, it is time to come inside our booth. Place you've been coming to me for many years, the biggest booth in the big leagues. And this is a look at uh, where we operate from. Now, we have added three things in this booth that are our own. Lee, who is our stage manager, who does a terrific job, has announced publicly that we are his favorite broadcast team in the league. So I went ahead and gave an autograph up top. Now, this offended some people. We'll hold on here for a quick pitch. Guess who was upset that he wasn't named the number one broadcast team in the league? The guy who autographs this below us. I don't know. Who? Oh, it's Michael K, the Yankees announcer, who's not happy. How about that? Oh. Copycat, huh? <laughs> so Lee made the announcement. We are the number one broadcast team that comes in this booth, according to Lee, and it's up to Lee. Pitch is low and inside. In the closet is drinks and some stuff that Jerry's got that he brings with him. Yeah, a lot of tape. I bring some tape with me. There's some <laughs> bottled water and a lot of wires. I like to bring wires to the ballpark. Some baskets. Jerry's always got a basket in hand. Up the middle, shift on. Long throw that'll get there in time to get Gonzalez. There's Lowry doing it, the third baseman. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing about the shift right there. You get that man in position to be able to make the throw from that from that deep out. And this time it's Laurie, as you can see him, go to his right. I mean, you know, that's the base hit right there, but it's taken away because of the shift. Now he moves to short right field in this defensive that, tandem. They use him in the other position with Gonzalez up, then when Ortiz comes up, they put him back in that right field position. Herbeck settling into his outing, jumps ahead of Ortiz, who struck out in the second inning. So it is now five in a row, retired by Drebeck, who has four strikeouts. And it's 0 2. The uh, other additions that we have added here, of course, this is that's, us. That's the back of you. This is, this is us. This is the one chair here, and Jerry, the other chair there. We don't have a lot of stuff. Really here you get a good view. This is the view that we have the yeah. stuff that we bring. That's the uh, extra headset in case uh, one of ours breaks down. You want to talk to the truck you go here to the. I can say stuff without anybody hearing me. You hope. Yes. Let's see. I don't like Jerry. Did you hear that? Oh, it yeah. came out. Oh, no, it came yeah. out. See nobody can hear you. Nobody now. can hear me now. That's good. That's <laughs> very good. So there's a little TV 101 and you have a cough button too. you can cough. One two is inside. Got some papers, you know, yes. some, some notes that we use. Uh, to obviously, we don't know all this stuff that we talk about. We have papers that we use to uh, give you information. Uh, Scorecards, high def monitors that we've yes. got this year. Great view. Terrific. A little high here, but not bad. Scorecard is key. Got to have a scorecard. Now I use different color pens. You don't. What's that? I use different color pens. You don't. No, I just use a, a big pen, the uh, the old-fashioned big pen. All the pitching stuff is in red. The uh, other stuff's in blue. Yeah, see, everything I've got is in blue. All blue. 3 2. Ortiz will hit it in the air to left field. Back goes Thames. And he'll make the catch for the second out. But Jerry, here's something we added two years ago that is still here. I thought it was a good idea maybe to have a suggestion box of things that would make the booth better. And they decided to put it by the trash can, which uh, yeah. I don't really. 
And that's why Lee. I, do we introduce Lee? We, we haven't seen Lee. Lee. Lee's, Lee's our stage manager. Mike. Yes, Lee is the best in the business. As Lee and Foxy, of course, on camera. It's been the same crew here for a very long time. They do an outstanding job. Except for my suggestion box, which they didn't take very seriously, obviously. Actually, Lee told me you're, you're number two in the league. He didn't say number one. Oh, really? Yeah, I said you're number two. So I don't, I don't want to. I, I don't know who number one is. Is this true? Wow. On the ground is short. Escobar has got it. And it's a one, two, three, fourth inning. Well, you've seen our booth. Three nothing, Toronto. Water, water, medication. <laughs>
Red Sox that he has faced in the game. His 60th pitch is away, and it's two and one now to Sweeney. Yeah, what has been a problem for him in the past, as you mentioned, on the walks, only one, and that coming back in the second inning. The corner this time on the inside, it's two and two. Only threat for the Red Sox, only inning in which they had base runners. The second inning, Euclid's doubled, Sweeney walked, and then proceeded to strike out Ross and Salta Lamacchia. And a one, two, three, first, a one, two, three, third, a one, two, three, fourth. A 2 2 pitch here to start the fifth. Very high for ball three. Cody Ross, then Jared Saltalamacchia. Grounded off the glove of Drebeck, slowed it up a tad, but Johnson still got a play and he makes it for the first out of the fifth inning and sent it down to Jenny Dell. Well done in the last four games Red Sox fans have learned that Ryan Sweeney can deliver big hits in the clutch and Sweeney said part of his success is because of what he's learned from some of his new teammates. Talking with Adrian all the day it, it helps me a lot being able to watch Adrian and Ortiz and stuff just the way they go about it and the way that they approach certain pitchers and you know like the guy today I haven't faced him so just kind of learning what a game plan and just having a game plan going up there I think is the main thing not necessarily changing anything mechanically. Sweeney has hit safely in all four of the Red Sox games with seven hits and two RBR. The 27 year old right fielder has already eclipsed his 2011 numbers in April with Oakland. Jerry Sweeney has certainly made a positive first impression with Sox fans. It has Jenny you know and it's a guy that really kind of goes overlooked a little bit I think you know we, we didn't talk a lot about him in spring training he was injured for a while got off to a slow stop but then started to heat up toward the end and uh, you know, by the guys had some big hits for the Red Sox here early in the season. Cody Ross swings at the 0 2 and drives it out toward deep left center field. Thames going back towards the wall, and that ball is up off the wall. Karen played by Rasmus, the center fielder, and Cody Ross has got a double, breaks up a string of nine in a row, retired by Kyle Drabeck. I mentioned in his last at bat that last night uh, he had hit, hit the ball hard a couple of times. Now that's the pitch right there that Cody Ross likes. The ball middle in, fastballs middle in. And that ball he hits hard to the wall for the uh, double. And you see the location of that pitch. That's really where he likes it uh, from what we saw down in spring training. And that's where he generates most of his power. One out Ross in scoring position at second base first base runner for the Red Sox since the second inning. And Jared Salta Lamaki the batter. Driven to right Bautista is there and he makes the catch no advance for Ross. Hard hit ball and he got to Batista in a hurry but right at him right where he was standing two down. Now that was a change up that time by Drebeck and that ball hit very hard by Salta Lamaki a butt. Standing right there, Jose Batista. Change up that stayed up in the zone a little bit. Ball hit well, sinking line drive by Salta Lamacchia, but the second out of the inning. Two down for Nick Punto, batting out of the number nine spot. Tied out to the center fielder, Colby Rasmus, in the third inning. Rebeck's got four strikeouts, but all the strikeouts for the Jays starter came in the first two innings. Since then, there's been some contact, but only one hit. That's a strike, and it's one and one. As Tim McClellan is now pointing up towards center field, there's a fan that's in the batter's eye that he's trying to get out of the batter's eye. Security to move the fan. Yeah, 
And he's not moving anywhere. Uh, he's no, waving he's, now that he's got the attention of the crowd. He's waving back to Tim McClellan. Now he's finally making his way off. What's going on here tonight, anyway? Not as many people as last night, but uh, much no. more, uh, many more issues. Ball and a strike to Punto. Not the bunt down or bunt bid. Fouls it off. Normally wouldn't want to see that uh, with two outs and a man in scoring position, but, but with the Red Sox down by three runs, uh, Punto looking to get on base any way he can. Up in El Escobar, the shortstop's calling and catching out number three. We're halfway through this game from Toronto, the Jays have a three-nothing lead. On top of the Red Sox, out hitting Boston seven to two. Two, three, and four. Expected for the Jays here in the fifth inning as Bard works into his fifth inning of his first major league start. Kelly Johnson's got a base hit tonight. And he takes strike one. Johnson, the Blue Jays second baseman, has popped out to short, then got his single in the third to come around to score the third Blue Jays run. He was traded from Arizona. It's part of the deal for former first round draft choice Aaron Hill and very good glove man, John McDonald. He's down one and two. It's been a five strikeout night for Bard, who has not walked anybody. Brings his 70th pitch. Up a run in the first and two in the third. He's had two one, two, three innings. Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Eastern Bank. Tradition, history, and a commitment to everyone on our team. These are just a few of the things Eastern Bank is made of. Find out more at easternbank.com. Johnson after the 2 2 fouls off another. One down the right field line, now one down the left field line. And took inventory on the bat to make sure he didn't break it. Seeing a lot more mixing of pitches now from Bob. We've already seen three change ups in this at bat to Johnson. Line and cut by Dustin Pedroia at second base. Fully extended to his right. Uh, look, that had base hit written all over until it got to Dustin Pedroia. Line shot by Kelly Johnson. Pedroia across his body and takes maybe extra bases away. That ball gets by Pedroia, hits that carpet and continues to roll maybe to the wall. One out, five in a row, retired by Bard now. And Batista has a pitch that almost gets him in 95. Fastball gets away from Bard here and just misses the uniform top of Batista. Comes back with a breaking ball and it's 2 and 0. Challenged him there, gets it by him two and one. Yeah, Batista all set for that 2 0 fastball. He got it, but it was up and out of the strike zone.
That's the first changeup right there that Bond has featured tonight against a right-handed hitter. Not even close to the strike zone, bouncing off Salt to Lamacchia. That'll get in there for a strike on the breaking ball full count. Well, the fans didn't like it because they saw Batista jump back, but the breaking ball picks up the inside corner. Swing and a miss, and Batista strikes out for the second time tonight. Six strikeout for Bard, and there's two down in the inning. Last time in the third inning, it was a fastball he threw by Batista. This time, it's the breaking ball, and again, it's that slower one that he features. So two sliders on the inside part of the plate to get Batista after he fell behind him. With some of the things being tweeted tonight about tonight's game, Euclid's getting his first hit. He's excited about Bard being the fifth starter right now. He just got Batista again. It uh, struck him out earlier in the game. And Bart actually in nine at bats for Batista struck out Batista five times. He's had success against him as Felix Dubron had success against him last night too. Six in a row retired by Bart. Adam Lind is quickly in the hole. Nothing in two. Bounce in and it's one and two to the Jays first baseman who is two for two in this game. Lind with a double in the first inning. An RBI single in the third inning. Slap foul still one and two. Who had been 0 for 4 in last night's game, striking out three times, having a much better night tonight. Hits it on the ground to short Nick Punto to his left. Throws out Lind and wraps up the inning number five. Through five. It's Toronto on top, 3 0. Four pitches in the first five innings. Top of the Red Sox order, Jacoby Ellsbury to lead it off here in the sixth inning. It's been a quiet night offensively for the Red Sox against Kyle Drabeck. For the first five frames, they have just two hits double for Euclid, a double for Ross. Now Ellsbury flips one foul, and it's 0 and 2. For every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings or the Sox earn a save, CBS Pharmacy will make a donation. The Boston's Children's Hospital towards their $25,000 donation this season. Ellsbury has grounded out to third and bounced out to second in two previous bats against Kyle Drabeck tonight. It'll be Pedroia, then Gonzalez. John Farrell has to be pleased with Kyle Drabeck as number five starter tonight. This through the first five innings, he has blanked the Red Sox. Back to back change ups that time to Ellsbury to keep that count of one ball and two strikes. He hasn't thrown many change ups tonight, but uh, back to back ones now to Jacoby Ellsbury, and Ellsbury fouling it off. Not 
will miss and it is two and two now to Ellsbury. That's ball three full count outside. Sox have the lead runner on and Jacoby Ellsbury. His second walk of the night given up by Drebeck. Well, tomorrow afternoon, after Red Sox first pitch, stay with us for Red Sox Game Day Live presented by Uno, TCX, Jerry, and Jenny at noon. John Lester will take them out, hoping to build on a strong season debut last Thursday against the Tigers. Be opposed by Ricky Romero, lefty. Kevin Euclid has launched three home runs against. Our live coverage of the series finale begins tomorrow morning at 11.30. It's only on Nesson. We'll wrap up the first road trip of the year for the Red Sox, who been away for a long time. Since the middle of February. Yes. All of spring training. And to start the season uh, with an exhibition game in Washington, D.C., and then move to Detroit for that series. They were there for five nights, three games. That'll miss for ball two, and all of a sudden now, Drebeck has lost some of his control here in the sixth inning. Now that's the Red Sox are hoping for, that it goes back to his ways of a year ago where he just walked a lot of guys. Ellsbury put together a pretty good bat to draw a walk to lead off this inning. A big night last night for Dustin Pedroia. Had the home run, his first of the year, to get the Red Sox on the board last night. And then he would start the rally that put the Red Sox on top of the double. As part of the blown save for Sergio Santos last night. And as always, the spark plug for the Red Sox. 2 0 pitch coming to Pedroia. And he drives it out towards deep left center field. On the run goes Rasmus back towards the wall. And that ball is off the wall. Rasmus plays the carom, is stopping at third as Ellsbury. It is a wall ball double out to left center for Pedroia. And it's second and third with nobody out. Now once again they go with a high fastball to Pedroia. We just showed you that clip where he hit two of them last night. That ball up in the zone again. And Pedroia again into the gap in left center field. Down by three runs, runs being cautious, holding up Ellsbury at third base. Bruce Worth and the pitching coach out there to talk to Drebeck. It retired nine batters in a row until Ross had a double off him last inning. At the final two outs, but now walking a double here to begin the sixth. And that'll get some stirring going in the Jays' pen. Well, Adrian Gonzalez, who had two home runs in a game last year, one was against Drebeck back on May 10th of last season. And he's coming up here, and if you go along here, he'd be able to tie this game. Adrian is 0 for 2 tonight against Kyle Drabeck. Lined out to the third baseman in the first and then grounded out to the third baseman in the fourth. Both times they're in the full shift for Adrian, but the runners at second and third, they do not shift this time. Johnson backing up a little bit at second base. Two and zero to Gonzalez. Drebeck has not been as sharp. Long time. Toronto Blue Jay Jason Fraser is up in the pen. In the air to right center field as he gets under it. Kobe Rasmus and Bautista coming together. Bautista hauls him off and then throws to third base. Throw to third is going to hit Pedroia. Run scores as Ellsbury is in. The throw hit Pedroia apparently in the back. 
Batista said he wanted that because he's got the better arm out there and almost got Pedroia third base. Now, last night, uh, Gonzalez had a big sacrifice fly in the ball game on a pitch that was up and out of the zone. As you can see right there, the fastball up. Actually, it was a changeup that was up, and then tonight he gets one down in the zone that he lifts. So, again, the focus on hitting a fly ball, getting the ball in the air, and getting a run home. But Joy is actually fortunate that ball hit him in the back because that would have been very close at third base. One out, Pedroia at third base, a run in for the Red Sox. As David Ortiz gets his third look at Kyle Drabeck tonight. David struck out swinging in the second, wide out to left in the fourth. Kyle Drabeck, of course, the son of former Major League Cy Young Award winner, Doug Drabeck. Twenty four years old. It's high for ball three. Pitching line brought to you by Lexus. Five and a third, three hits, one run, two walks, and four Ks for Trebeck. About to throw his 90th pitch as he works with one out in the sixth. Ortiz and a check swing foul. Now David, before tonight's game, getting ready for the game, warming up. Has over 228,000 followers. He is the team leader on the Red Sox. As he has, uh, as you can see, 228,000 plus followers. There is ball four. He'll head down to first base. Third walk given up by Drebeck, and two of them have come in this inning. And that's going to do it as John Farrell heads out. Uh, Jason Fraser warming in the pen for the Blue Jays. And Drebeck gets them into the sixth inning with a lead. But it did appear to lose a little bit of his control in this inning. It's 3 1 Toronto. with Darren McIntosh. You won't want to miss our one-on-one -on -one in studio interview with Patriots new receiver Anthony Gonzalez. Plus Andy Brickley will also visit the studio to give us his take on Bruins Caps game one. And Nick Cafardo will give you his thoughts on Ozzie Gian's five game suspension. It's all coming up on Nessa Daily tonight after our Red Sox coverage only on Nessa. 91 pitches for Kyle Drabeck who departs after five and a third responsible for the runners on the corners. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. The all time club leader in appearances by a pitcher with 457 in his career for the Blue Jays, Jason Fraser. He's already been in two games this year. He's not given up a run. Comes in with one out and Dustin Pedroia at third base. David Ortiz at first base. Red Sox down by two. Kevin Euclid the first batter that Fraser will face. Back in, the, back in the second inning, the opposite field double for Kevin Euclid, which is generally a good sign, taking the ball to the opposite field. Euclid's his first hit of the year. He is one for 13. Actually, make that one for 14 now as he's grounded out in the fourth inning. That is outside one and one. A walk to begin the inning for Ellsbury. Double for Pedroia. A sack fly for Adrian Gonzalez who plates the Red Sox first run of the night. Ortiz walks and it's first and third with one out. For the first and Ortiz back to the bag. 
last night when Ortiz took off for second base, they were playing behind him. Not the case right now. Fouled straight back to the backstop, 93 from Fraser. It's been about a 16 minute wait for Bard. His team has been batting, the pitching change and all. And Bard sitting on 84 pitches through the first five innings. Tired the last seven batters that he's faced. And as the wait continues. Two and two. Last year, Fraser allowed only runs in nine of 44 outings for the Toronto Blue Jays. Two two is on the ground towards short. Escobar to second for one, on the first for two. Double play that will wrap up the top of the sixth inning. The Red Sox do get a run, but it's 3 1 Toronto. It's Justin Thomas is back up in the Boston pen. Been warming earlier in the game, but right now Bard's been in a pretty good groove. Seven in a row retired, but he did have a 19 minute wait, the longest he has had to sit in the Red Sox dugout waiting to return to the hill. Edwin and Carnacion will foul one off to the right, and even the count of one and one. Him up two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. That's one of the few sliders uh, tonight that Bond has left up in the zone. Fortunately, no contact by Encarnacion. Put a home run swing on it, but no contact. Well, last night we had better than 48,000 here, just shy of 50,000 on opening night. Tonight's attended 26,351. Such a big building, though. It doesn't seem like it, but there are 26,000 people here tonight. As the pitch bounces in outside, ball four to Encarnacion. Now Bond tonight with six strikeouts on the night. Most of those have come on breaking balls. A breaking ball here to Lowry, as you can see. Another breaking ball for a strikeout, but then a fat ball by Batista. Those are three of the six strikeouts for Daniel in this game tonight. First walk allowed by Bard. Starts this sixth inning for Edwin and Carnacion, who's at first base. And now Brett Laurie, the batter. Lori struck out in the first inning, single to right to drive in a run in the third inning. Bob McClure on the phone. Thomas has been warming in the Red Sox pen. Runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw down is going to be not in time. Stolen base from Casio. Second one of the night for Encarnacion. Picks a good pitch to go on. He got the breaking ball from Bard. Throws going to bounce at second base. Picked by Pedroia, but not in time to get on Encarnacion, who picks up his second steal of the season, second of the game.
Loring gets tied up and fouls it off down by his knees. One and two. Well, the hottest seats in New England are at Boston.com slash tickets powered by Ace Ticket. Read Boston.com's outstanding sports coverage, then find game times and buy tickets as you follow your favorite teams. Your seats await at Boston.com slash tickets. Ball and two strikes to Lori. Two and two. On deck, Eric Thames. Blue Jays batting in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nobody out, runner in scoring position. After the Red Sox had scored their first run of the night in the top half of this inning. Well, it's time now for tonight's AT&T trivia question. And the question is, who is the oldest player to ever appear in a game for the Blue Jays? I'll be answer for you a little bit later. Carnacion at second base, nobody out. Shot towards short. Hunter on the run. The throw and up the inside. On a hop to Gonzalez who picked it, but Lurie beats it out and Encarnacion takes third. El Punto for a second looked like he might go to third base with this as Euclid could not get to the back. He's looking that way, but Euclid was not there, so he goes across the diamond, and by then it's too late. The one hop throw to first base. And Bobby Valentine headed to the mound. And he will make the move. 96 pitches thrown here tonight for Daniel Bard. 3 1 Blue Jays. No fees or any other types of curveballs. Check out what else we're made of at easternbank.com. 3 1 Blue Jays on top of the Red Sox and Daniel Bard. He's done for the night. Three RBI hits tonight against Bard, all coming on fastballs. Encarnacion with a fastball and he picks up the base hit on. Adam Lynn on a fastball and then opposite field goes Laurie. On a fastball, but I think all in all, not a bad outing at all for Daniel Barr. Ends up throwing 96 pitches. Seeing him down like he settled into the game, you know, after some early inning jitters, I think that he settled down, calmed down, and, and got better as the game went on. From the third through the end of the fifth, he had retired seven batters in a row. And then he did have that long wait, the 19 minute wait to start this inning, and then the walk and the infield hit. And all of a sudden, it's first and third, nobody out. And he will turn it over to the bullpen and Justin Thomas worked a third of an inning through 10 pitches on Saturday against the Detroit Tigers in his Red Sox debut. First time that he's been on an opening day roster in the majors. It's a non roster invitee to spring training. And we saw him in 11 games during the spring. Infield in all the way around as it's strike one to Eric Thames. Red Sox do not want to give up another run at this stage of the ball game. Infield in with nobody out. Runner at first goes. Thames takes a ball. Or did he? Did he go? No. So as Marvin Hudson as Lori steals second base. That's almost a gimme right there, especially with the infield in. You're going to see that. 90% of the time, that runner at first base take off 
and just take second base. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. Thomas spent the entire season last year at Triple A, the Pittsburgh Pirates organization, pitching at Indianapolis. And he was in the most games in the International League, appeared in a career high 63 games. And eight relief wins coming out of the pen. Two and two. In the spring, he was very good against left handed hitters, and largely the reason he made the team. Along with Franklin Morales making up the left handed contingent in the Red Sox pen. In tight, ball three. Matt Albers warming in the Red Sox pen. That's ball four and the bases are loaded. So Thomas comes in and walks the first batter that he faces. Loads the bases and J.P. Aaron C.B. is coming up. Sibia struck out in the second inning, rounded out in the fourth inning. As Thomas and Salta Lamacchia get together. Thomas has had 20 career major league relief outings coming into this season. Between time in Seattle and in Pittsburgh. He was in Seattle in 08, Pittsburgh in 2010. And He's in a jam here. Bases filled with Blue Jays. Nobody out in the sixth. Two and zero. Oh. And right now, having a tough time finding the strike zone with any of his pitches. His off-speed pitch. That time it was the fastball down and out of the zone. Tipped and it's two and one. Blue Jays had a three nothing lead. Red Sox get a run back in the top of the six, but the Blue Jays have the bases loaded on two walks and an infield hit. And nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning, a chance to really open it up here. And it's outside three and one. CBA in the right center with a base hit. From third comes in Carnacion. Lori will score. Two runs in for the Blue Jays who take a 5 1 lead. Now that's what happens when you operate from behind in the down. Aaron Sebia finally gets his fastball. The ball was away, but when the infield pulled in, the line shot. Goes in a center field. That's that ball down and away from Aaron Sevilla. Good play coverage. And they see the line drive up the middle for the base hit. Bob McClure is headed out there. The bookie is closed on bar. The runs that score charge to him. 
It's five plus eight hits, five runs. He walks a batter, strikes out six, and those 96 pitches in his outing. And there was one stretcher in the middle that we talked about, third through the fifth. We retired seven batters in a row. By this inning, he allowed a walk and an infield hit, and that was it. He leaves, and both those guys score. The inherited runner is allowed to score by Justin Thomas. Now allowed three of four inherited runners to score in two outings. And as they come into the game late against the Tigers on Saturday. Will be Rasmus, number nine man, with runners at the corners, and still nobody out. Fly ball to left field. Ross headed back onto the track to make the catch. Tagging at third is Thames. He will score, and the Blue Jays take a 6 1 lead. Now, Rasmus doesn't wait around at all. He picks on that first pitch and takes it well deep enough to left field to bring that run in. Finally, pick up the first out of the inning to the Red Sox, but now a 6 to 1 ball game. Top of the order, Yanel Escobar, two hit night, a single in the first, single in the third, and scored a couple runs before striking out in the fourth inning. Fly ball foul off to the right. CB at first base. Down and in and picked by Salta Lamacchio. The ball to strike down to Escobar. Nice play by Salt Lamacchia to keep that runner at first base. This fastball just overthrown right there by Thomas. See if the uh, Blue Jays keep the pressure on here. 1 1 count. They may hit and run. Strike one and two. And a tough bottom of the sixth inning for the Red Sox. Blue Jays have scored three times so far. They've got JP Aaron CB at first base, one out in the inning. Down and in, two and two. Ellsbury, the center fielder, step or two towards right center for Escobar to go the other way. Chopped off the plate towards short. Punto on the run and in time to get Escobar as Aaron Sebia takes second with now two outs in the inning. Mind you, this copyright telecast is presented by authority of the Boston Red Sox may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox. Two outs in the Toronto sixth inning. Kelly Johnson bats. Hook to first and a hop. Gonzalez has got it. He'll run to the bag to end the inning. But a big inning for the Jays. They score three times and take a 6 1 lead to the seventh. Answer is 
Phil Decro, 48 years old. Negro fits for the Jays, 87 at the age of 48. Turned out to be the second to last appearance of his 24 year Hall of Fame career. Second and third oldest players to appear in a game for Toronto have both done so this season. We just saw Omar Vizquel, who's two weeks shy of his 45th birthday, had two at bats in the Blue Jays' season opener against the Cleveland Indians, and 41 year old Darren Oliver has pitched in three of Toronto's four games, including last night. Ryan Sweeney leads it off in the seventh inning. Red Sox have work to do, trailing down by five. Worked out to be a 23 minute wait for Jason Fraser. Induced a 6 4 3 double play, grounded into by Kevin Euclid that ended the sixth inning. He's back out there to start the seventh. And a fly ball to left field. It sends Thames back quickly. It is over his head. One hops the wall as Sweeney glides into second base with a double to get the seventh inning started. Now the Red Sox offense has shown some signs of life the last couple of innings. Of course, last inning ended with a double play. Sweeney starts off the seventh with a hard hit ball up over the head of Eric Thames. Again, Sweeney using the whole ballpark, this time going to the opposite field. And the Red Sox have the leadoff man at second base here in the top of the seventh. Here is Cody Ross who struck out in the second inning and doubled in the fifth. He has one of four Red Sox hits on the night. The pitcher of record Kyle Drabeck went five and a third three hits one run walks three and strikes out four. All four of his strikeouts came in the first two innings. As you see, Michael Bowden warming now in the Red Sox pen. Two and oh. Darren McIntosh with an update coming up. Nesson Daly, your need to know. Two o pitch is over the outside corner. Two and one. Mentioned the all-time leader in appearances for the Blue Jays is Fraser, but uh, he departed the organization for the Chicago White Sox last year, and has returned. Finished the year with the White Sox, pitching in 20 games. Swing and a miss, and it evens up at two and two. Now Cody Ross chasing one that was up and out of the strike zone. Boom, a breaking ball on a 2-0 count, then comes back with a fastball on the 2-1 count, up and probably not a strike, but the, the swing and the miss by Ross. Salto Lamaki on deck, nobody out in the seventh inning. Fraser broke into the big leagues in 2004. Last year, going to the White Sox. A deal for Edwin Jackson in July, right before the trade deadline, but then traded back here to the Blue Jays during the offseason on New Year's Day this year. And back with the Jays again. And again, 400 and now 58 appearances in a Blue Jays uniform for Jason Fraser. There is strike three. Cody Ross strikes out for the first out of the seventh inning. Second time Ross has struck out tonight, both times on fastballs. This one on the inside part of the plate. Had Cody Ross jumping back, but Tim McCullough says strike three. 
Well, coming up immediately following the game tonight, stay with us for WB Mason's Red Sox Extra Innings Live. TC Eck and Jenny. That could break down this long awaited start for Daniel Bard. You'll hear the starters post game comments plus Jenny's conversation with Bobby Valentine as he gives you his thoughts on game two of the series. It's all coming up after the game and it's only on Nesson. Runner at second one out Salta Lamacchia. With his third at bat of the night. Struck out in the second lined out to right in the fifth. Action for the Jays. Left hander up in the pen now as Perez warms. That's a strike, and it's one and one. Next half inning, we will be asking Jerry a question. That always makes me very nervous. We need you some time to think about it because usually we just throw it at you and then you got to do it. <laughs> so we'll give you some time. I know the answer, I think, but. You do? Yeah, next half inning, we're going to ask you who your favorite player of all time is. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I think I know the answer. We'll find out next inning. Outside three and one. You think it's a member of the Red Sox? No. No, I think I think it's somebody that you formulated your opinions about as a kid. Young. Minor leaguer. Swing and a miss, and it's a full count. At least I think so. Say something like Marco Scudero or <laughs> somebody who's recently been on the Red Sox, but I don't think so. Nah, you may be on the right track. Okay. 20th pitch for Fraser, and it's ball four. Down to first goes Salta Lamacchia. Two on, one away. And Nick Punto coming up. Red Sox trying to get something done here in the seventh. I want to remind you to win a free pair of Red Sox tickets on Wednesdays by being spotted enjoying a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee at participating locations. Go to DunkinDonuts.com slash hot cold to learn more. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of Massachusetts or New Hampshire, 18 or older. For a full set of official rules, visit DunkinDonuts.com. You know, the way Jason Frage is going about this, it's almost like he's behind 6 to 1 in the ball game. Just taking a lot of time between pitches. So John Farrell go to the phone to find out if uh, they were ready down in the bullpen. A high ball one to Punto. He is flied out to center field and popped out to short. For strike one and one. Blue Jays got a run in the first, two in the third. Red Sox got a run back in the sixth to get within two, but then Toronto tacks on three runs in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Here are Punto. Swing and a miss. One and two. Across the outfield against Punto, hitting from the left side of the plate, shading him to the opposite field and not very deep at all. Punto, a veteran of 11 major league seasons, signed a two year deal with the Red Sox in the offseason. Looks at ball two, two and two. Top of the Red Sox order, Jacoby Ellsbury waiting on deck. Punto hits it in the air to left field, sending Eric Thames back to make the catch for the second out of the inning. No advance for the base runners. John Farrell coming out to make the change. So John Farrell makes the change here with two outs in the inning, and Luis Perez makes his way in. Three runs on three fastballs that were hit for base hits. Pulling one, one up the middle, and then one to the opposite field, and then uh, three of his strikeouts. A lot of, most of his strikeouts tonight, uh, six of them came on the breaking ball, except that one there that was with Batista on a fastball. I thought, all in all, I thought as the night went on, Daniel Bod got better. Red Sox, unfortunately, have not been able to do anything offensively. Against his pitching staff so far tonight uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. While we have a moment, let's review this. Ask Jerry that we were just talking about a few minutes ago. Who's your favorite baseball player of all time? Well, it's I have I really have two. Oh, I really have two. But I gotta if if I have to go with one, I'm gonna say Pete Rose. That was my pick. That's what I thought. And my second choice is Kyle Yastrzemski. Okay. But I would have to say Pete Rose uh, because he's a guy that got just about everything that he had out of his ability. Mm -hmm. And of course, Yastrzemski was always a favorite of mine, especially growing up in New England and getting a chance, obviously, to play with him. Favorite all time pitcher would probably be Nolan Ryan because you played with him, but I know you love Pedro. Well, I, I got to go with Pedro Martinez. Really? Uh, wow. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to, to play with Nolan Ryan, and that was a great thrill and part of one part of one of his no hitters. Uh, but uh, watching Pedro Martinez pitch uh, that stretch that he had with the Red Sox, I've never seen anything quite like that. And that was in the steroid era. We have a new question for Jerry tonight. Be honest. How well do you think the Red Sox will do if we stay healthy? Wow, well, we've been talking about this in spring training. This is going to be a this is going to be a very tough division to play in. You know, the Yankees, Tampa Bay, off to a good start. You got the Toronto. You can see he's got a good, good ball club here. The Red Sox got a good ball club. If they stay healthy, they should be in the pack. Uh, you get the advantage of an extra wild card team this year, which uh, which could help. But uh, you know, <laughs> there's a long way to go. But uh, you know, they should be a contending ball club. They've got a good ball club, and it should get better as the season goes on. Jacoby Ellsbury takes strike one from the new pitcher Luis Perez, who comes into the game with runners at first and second, and two down. Third appearance for Perez is one and zero. He's not given up a run, and three walks, three Ks. He appeared in the game last night. We're at the third of an inning. There's four and a third innings is yet to yield a base hit. To begin the season out of the Blue Jays pen. Ryan Sweeney at second. Jared Saltalamaki at first. Two down. To center field, Kobe Rasmus coming in. Out goes Escobar, and it's Escobar. 
Makes the catch with his back to the plate to end the inning. Red Sox strand two. Let's check in with your need to know with Essa Daily presented by Sun Life Financial. Here's Darren McIntosh. It has expressed to donate $500 to the Red Sox Foundation for every Red Sox home run. Hessen has Express committed to helping the cause. The Red Sox will move on to their third pitcher of the game. As we play along to the bottom of the seventh inning, Michael Bowden into the game. Through ten pitches on Saturday, no decision against the Tigers. No hits, no runs, a walk, and no K's for Bowden, his second appearance of the year. And he takes over for Justin Thomas, who went an inning giving up a hit, a run. He allowed two inherited runners to score, walked a batter, and did not strike anybody out. Daniel Bard is on the hook, five plus five runs. Jose Bautista, who is 0 for 7 in the series, and was struck out twice tonight by Daniel Bard. Leads it off here in the seventh inning. Bowden worked the eighth inning on Saturday in his season debut. And the opening day roster for the Red Sox for the first time in his career. Four different stints with the Red Sox last year. 14 relief appearances total. Spent the majority of last year as the Pawtucket Red Sox primary closer. And he had 16 saves last year for the Paw Sox. 2.73 earned run average. Boston Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Burger King, the proud sponsor of opening week baseball. Look at the Rogers Center that is at 26,351 in it tonight. Join the Blue Jays 6 1 lead at the moment. After we had better than 48,000 in the house last night, saw the Blue Jays. Blow a late game lead and the Red Sox came from behind but still pretty good crowd on hand here tonight. such a big building. But even with 26,000 and it sometimes seems like it's empty. Swing and a miss and Bautista strikes out for the third time tonight. And twice tonight he's going down on fastballs once by Bard this time by Bowden. The other time was on a slider. That fastball right down the middle of the plate and no contact by Batista is that shoulder pulling off the ball just a little bit. One down in the seventh inning Adam Lynn the batter. Double single and a ground out single in the third produced a run. And his second RBI of the year. Who was your favorite player growing up. My favorite player was Dwight Evans. That's, I knew that I knew that. Yep. I liked everything about him. I liked his batting stance, which I copied in Little League poorly. <laughs> Very tough to be kind of pigeon toed like that in Little League and not be a good hitter in the first Did place. Did you play the outfield? No. I played uh, shortstop, a little second base. But you still had that batting stance? Still had the batting stance. <laughs> 1 1 is in there for strike two. Another ask Jerry question. Let's get off me. Let's get back to Jerry. Jerry, why doesn't uh, Don Orsillo tweet more? He just doesn't have time for it. He, he really That's doesn't. That's the problem. He's got so much to do between his mailbag and his chats and, and different things like that. He, he just does not have time to tweet. The shallow left and out is Punto to make the catch for the second out. And there's two down. With all the podcasts and mailbags and chats that we do, it is. You got plenty difficult. to keep you busy. Yes. Two outs in the seventh inning.
<laughs> this I'm not sure I want to know about. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I mean, do we have to answer that? We have a pregame ritual. Wow. Uh, I have. Let's put it this way. I have a routine, and that oh, routine very seldom changes, as, ever, as you well know. Yes. As we've said many times, uh, anybody can find me anytime they want. They know exactly where I am at any time of the day. Look out. Ball oh. crushed. Oh, to left. Wow. Edwin Encarnacion gets his first home run of the year. The blast that puts the Blue Jays on top 7-1. to one. He's had a very, very good night tonight. A single and a stolen base and an RBI back in the first inning. A walk and a stolen base in the sixth. And now this bomb. First home run of the season for Encarnacion. So all the good feeling of last night for the Red Sox has left the building right now. Swing and a miss for Brett Laurie, who is down 0 2. One two is on the ground towards short punto to his left fires to first for the out that ends the seventh inning the Jays had a run and Carnacion with a home run makes it seven one Toronto. With an RBI. As Laurie would drive in a run in the third inning a two run inning in the third and one of the bright spots for the Red Sox tonight Dustin Pedroia is double off the wall in left center field Red Sox have been held to just one run in this game so far through the first seven a game that was started tonight by Daniel Bard there's five plus and gives up five runs on eight hits ends up throwing 96 pitches in the game as we head into inning number eight the Blue Jays uh, tacked on another run in the bottom of the seventh inning and yeah, Dustin Pedroia leads it off against Luis Perez who came in in the seventh. Pedroia struck out in the first grounded out in the third and doubled in the sixth is Casey Jansen right hander now warming in the Blue Jays pen. A strike and it's three and one to Pedroia. He's got one of only four Red Sox hits on the night. Jays out hitting the Sox ten to four. Adrian Gonzalez. Then we'll see David Ortiz down the right field line towards the corner and foul. Another question for Jerry. What is your favorite stadium to visit and why? That's a good question. Uh, well, my favorite stadium used to be the old Yankee Stadium. Yes. And it was always, you know, fun going there as a player and a broadcaster. 
to do games. It's a, it's a tough one. And, uh, Seattle's very nice. So I thought you'd like Camden Yards. I love Camden Yards. I've always liked Camden Yards. Third, Laurie on the run off balance throw, and it pulls the runner, or pulls the first baseman, Lind, off the bag, and the runner is safe in Pedroia. Tough play right there, and then not able to keep the toe in the bag was Lind. Should go as a base hit for Dustin Pedroia, his second of the night. Here comes Laurie charging this ball, and the sidearm flip's going to pull the first baseman, Adam Lind, off the bag. Pedroia with the head for a slide. See if they go a base hit or an error on that. I think it's going to be a base hit. It is a base hit in the second of the night for Pedroia. Now Adrian Gonzalez 0 for 2 with a sack fly. Hits a fly ball to center. Rasmus on the run to get back there to make the catch. Tomorrow morning, beginning at 6 on WEI's Dennis and Callahan show. Sox manager Bobby Valentine will join John and Jerry. We'll ask him if this might be the only start of the year for Daniel Bard. It all begins at 6 a.m. tomorrow, right here on Nesson and on 93.7 FM WEEI. I think I can answer that question already. It's probably not going to be. Uh, I think we got more starts in the future for yeah, Daniel Bard. I think we do. I've been bumped back to Thursday on Dennis and Callahan. You were bumped? Yes, i have gone back to Thursday now for this week. David Ortiz takes ball one. Jenny Dell will take us through some news and notes around Major League Baseball coming up next half inning. In there for a strike and it's one and one to David Ortiz. Ortiz does not have a hit tonight. And he struck out in the second, flied out to left in the fourth, and walked in the sixth inning. There is Kevin Euclid waiting on deck. to the left field sending Thames back almost to the warning track to make the catch for the second out and Pedroia back to the bag two down uh, back in the sixth inning the Red Sox were threatening to do some damage they had a run two men on but that rollover swing by Kevin Uglis results in a double play and that ended the threat in the sixth inning and what kind of put this one away is to this point is a base hit right there by Lowry and then Aaron Sevilla with the infield in the line drive to center field to bring home a couple of runs. Two down in the eighth. Pedroia at first base not held on as Euclid gets his fourth A.B. of the night. Kevin doubled back in the second inning for his first hit of the year. Kyle Drabeck, pitcher of record for the Jays. Five and a third tonight, one run. And Drabeck left. Fraser came in, and he went an inning and a third, allowing no runs. Luis Perez has been in since. You know, I liked was uh, the Giants ballpark. We don't get there very often, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was. That was a very nice ballpark to visit. Beautiful scenery. As you look out towards center field, AT&T ballpark. So there's a lot of nice ones there. They really are. They really are. I, I enjoy coming up here. I love this trip to Toronto every time we come to to Canada. 
I like Philly. I know you do. I like Philly. You don't like Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Too small? No, it, it's don't. not that, that. The town? It's a long walk from when we get out of the car to the booth. <laughs> This one fouled off. That is a big issue, and I know that it's going to be a really big issue when we go back to Wrigley Field this year. Oh, my God. Without the elevator. That, that, that is a, uh, I tell you, that was the hottest game I think I've ever done in my life. That, that we had one game in that three-game series, and it was smoking hot that day. Friday afternoon, Greg Maddox against Bronson Arroyo. 3-2. On the ground, up the middle, and that'll find its way into center field. Pedroia heads for third base. He will get there on the second hit of the night for Kevin Euclid. Well, you would have loved to have had that last time up, but uh, he'll take a two hit game to get him going. It looked like uh, Perez, the pitcher, wanted to make the play on this and pull his glove back. And actually, when the ball was by him, that's when he stabbed for it. Don, you could, you know, that question that came up about my ritual before yes. the game, you could you could give that. I could pretty much walk you through it, although it has changed all day. It, it's changed a little bit since when we first started working. There was a soap opera involved early on that I don't think is part of the regiment anymore. That's gone to a nap. Yes. Yes. So the soap opera's out, the nap is now in. I was that was the only thing I was curious about because I knew it was around the same time frame. Right. This one has popped up foul down the third baseline. Laurie is over. He can't make the catch, but a great try. And he went in hard. He got a lot of stuff down there he had to deal with, too, didn't he? He was shot to the ribs there in the low fencing. You know, that's why the fans here in Toronto love this young kid. I mean, he gives you every bit of effort that he has on every play. More the back than the ribs. Pretty solidly put together. He had a pretty good collision last year with Jason Veritek. First and third, two down, and an 0 1. Euclid takes off, but it's fouled off. Another thing that I think has changed over the years is your eating time. You eat and it's really breakfast, but it's lunch together and it's like 11 ish, right? Uh, about that, yeah. Right. About and that. then that's it until, until dinner, dinner time, time here at the ballpark. At the ballpark. Right. Sweeney with his swing and a foul tip to stay alive. Yeah, it's pretty much coffee in the morning. Yep. There's Read no, the papers. No more working out. That was part of your early stuff too. When we yeah, were that's there. unfortunately. That's gone. I can't do that anymore. Okay, so wake up coffee. Uh, read the computer. Yep. Check emails. Yep. Send out a tweet every now and then. Uh, lunch. Early lunch service. Early lunch. Back to sleep. Back to sleep. Shower. Ballpark. That's it. Swing and a foul. It's not much. It's uh, really not much different. Uh, any day. Every day. And it's the same times. Right. Today I messed you up a little bit because I wanted to go at 245. That really I, threw I, me I, off. You I weren't was, comfortable with that. I could tell right away. I was sitting in the lobby for 45 minutes <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so just because I wanted to leave at 245 did not mean that it was going to be any earlier or later to the lobby. Right. It was the same time to the lobby. Same time to the lobby. the time change we were leaving. Sweeney strikes out. And the Red Sox strand a pair in the eighth. 7 1 Jays. News and notes coming up. <laughs> 7 1 Blue Jays on top of the Red Sox. Michael Bowden back on the mound and he delivers strike one to Eric Thames. Leads it off for the Blue Jays. Well, the Red Sox have struggled in this category for sure. 0 for 9. They just left two men on in the eighth inning. Swing and a miss, and it's 1 and 2. All right, the starter tonight, 5 plus, 5 runs. Justin Thomas in an inning gave up a run. 
Bowden has been in since the seventh. He gave up a run, a long home run to Edwin Encarnacion. It has Toronto on top, seven to one. Little number. Bowden off the mound, bare hands and throws wildly. It's backed up by Pedroia. But Thames is on to begin things in the eighth. Send it down to Jenny Dell. Yes, John, time now for some MLB news and notes. New Marlins manager Ozzie Guillen has been suspended five games by the team for comments he made regarding former Cuban leader Fidel Castro. Guillen said today in a press conference that this episode has left him embarrassed, and he said it's the biggest mistake he's made in his life. The Texas Rangers have locked up one of their key players. Two-time All-Star Ian Kinsler signed a five-year, $75 million extension with the team that will keep him in Texas through 2017. And Barry Zito accomplished what Tim Lincecum, Matt Cain, and Madison Baumgartner couldn't. He got the Giants in the win column for the first time this season with a complete game, four-hit shutout yesterday. It was the first shutout for Zito since 2003. Jenny, thanks very much. Uh, some other extensions handed out today, too. The Reds' uh, Brandon Phillips gets a six-year extension today. And Carlos Santana, the Indians catcher, getting a five-year extension. So some pretty big extensions. Yeah, good payday for a lot yes. of guys today. Not hearing many options. This one has popped up foul ground. Imagine uh, Pedroia sitting there thinking about the Kinsel contract. Yeah. $75 million, was it? 75 million for Kinsman. Very good player. That's a benchmark right there for Dustin Madroy to be thinking about. Brandon Phillips got six years for 72.5. Wow. Second baseman. Mm. 02. His top foul off the plate. We usually hear about just signings like that to this stage of the season. This no. early. And the number of years that are being handed out right now, too. It's going back it's to long years. Always auto and all these guys. Long years. Yeah. You're not hearing a lot about options, just straight years. The 0 2 pitch from Bowden is on the corner for strike three. Second strikeout for Michael Bowden. And there's one out in the eighth. Bowden going to the fastball, picking up the outside corner. Good pitch by Bowden. Everything in that at bat in the strike zone to Aaron Sebia. One on, one out. Kobe Rasmus, two for 20 start to his season. 0 for 2 tonight, but he did have a sacrifice fly in the sixth inning. Produce the sixth Toronto run of the night. Slaps it foul. Covidian, a global healthcare products company, is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox Foundation, helping to address health needs in our communities. One on, one out in the Blue Jays' eighth inning. Jammed and fouls it off. 0 and 2. Top of the order, Yanel Escobar on deck. Swing and a miss. And Michael Bowden with back to back K's. Three strikeouts in all in his outing. Two down in the eighth. Got Batista back in the seventh. Gets Aaron Sebia. Now gets Rasmus on an off speed pitch. A change up from Bowden to pick up the strikeout. Two down in the eighth. Felix Dubron coming off a well pitched game last night for the Red Sox. Felix Dubron's debut last night, which was very good for the Red Sox, named the fourth starter at the end of spring training and pitched well here last night. Had some good poise on the mound against the tough Toronto Blue Jays lineup. Five innings, 
Two runs on four hits. And he kept Bautista completely in check. Don, look to your right right now. There's a guy staring at us. To the right, yes, he is. It's, it's alarming. <laughs> Just so look at Jesus' eyes. <laughs> There's a fly ball to center. Ellsbury drifts back. Going to stay in the yard. Jacoby puts it away. We will head for the ninth inning with Toronto on top, seven to one. That was weird. Lines. Kia Motors. And by Sullivan Tire. The beautiful city of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Not been a good state for the Red Sox tonight, anyway. After a victory last night, the Red Sox trail the Blue Jays seven to one as they come to bat in the ninth. The pitcher is Casey Jansen. His third appearance of the year. One and zero, not giving up a run in three innings. He's given up only two hits. And opponents hitting at 182 against Jansen. Last year he finished the year with a 6-0 record. Cody Ross leads it off and takes strike one. Jansen became the third Blue Jays pitcher to finish with a winning record without a loss since Dennis Lamp, who was 11-0. Former Red Sox reliever Dennis Lamp. Cody Ross tonight has doubled and struck out twice. Don't forget, coming up immediately after the game, stay with us for WB Mason, Red Sox Extra Innings Live. It's all the post game coverage you'll need right here on Nesson. 0 2 is high, and it's 1 and 2. Laffey in the pen for the Jays. It's just called up today. Swing and a miss for Ross, third time that he has struck out tonight. Time now for a look at the road ahead, brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Tomorrow in the final game of the series, it'll be a pair of lefties on the mound. John Lester, 6 and 1 in his last eight starts here at the Rogers Center, which includes 2 and 0 oh last year. He'll be opposed by Ricky Romero. He's not fared well against the Red Sox in 13 career starts. There's an ERA over 7. Essence live coverage begins at 11.30 tomorrow morning with the Red Sox first pitch. Jared Saltalamacchia takes the first pitch for strike one. He was struck out, lined out, and walked. And he's down 0-2. Sure to join us tomorrow afternoon for game three of this series. A 12:30 start for the game. 11:30 pregame show. Up and away, and it's one and two. And then the Red Sox finally get back for their home open, which everybody is looking forward to. Friday afternoon, the Tampa Bay Rays will be in town. The one two. You got some day baseball coming up. You got tomorrow, you got Friday, and Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, right? Are we up against that? Is it this Monday morning? Is it Monday or the next Monday? No, it's Monday. This 16, Monday. 11 05. No, the 11 o'clock game. Yes. Marathon Monday. So that'll be five day games in a row. Now that changes rituals. Yes, I, <laughs> yes it does. <laughs> Payoff pitch is fouled off. Tampa Bay for a wraparound series this weekend. Four games at Fenway Park. Texas in for two, and then the Yankees are in for three. So it's back out on the road for the Red Sox to Minnesota and Chicago. Josh Beckett, the home opener. 
Three two popped up foul. Strike three. Salt of the Machia gets the bad news halfway to first base. So he's out. Two down. Now Salt of the Machia thought that ball was too low, but not to McCullen. Take a look at the Amica pit zone. Right at the bottom of the strike zone. Second time that Salt of the Machia has struck out. And now eight strikeouts for Jays pitching tonight. Strike one to Nick Punto. Put the ball in the air three times, but it is 0 for three. Red Sox dropping the first three games of the year to the Tigers. They come here, they win game one against the Jays. And down to their last out here in game two. Trailing by six runs. On the ground, right side and through into right field, a base hit. Nick Punto it's a hit here with two away in the ninth. Well, after three straight strikeouts for a Blue Jay pitching against Red Sox hitters, Punto extends the game with a base hit. Two down, runner at first, and Jacoby Ellsbury, the batter. He was aboard in the sixth inning on a walk and came around to score the Red Sox only run on the night. On a sacrifice fly for Adrian Gonzalez. Raybeck is the pitcher of record right now on the Blue Jays' side of things. As he went five and a third, giving up one run in his season debut, their fifth starter. On the hook is Daniel Bard with five plus five runs on eight hits. Justin Thomas had allowed two of his inherited runners to score. In again and it's three and oh Jansen all of a sudden all over the place. Matsu, bench coach alongside John Farrell, former manager of the Seattle Mariners. Three o pitch. Rosbury taken all the way. He takes strike one. One point we had twenty six thousand three hundred and fifty one on hand here tonight at Rogers Center in Toronto. Ellsbury on a check swing foul. It's a full count now. First base. Red Sox out two on with two outs. 
Not going quietly here in the ninth. Well, that looked very similar to the pitch that was called to strike on Jared Saltalamakia a little bit earlier in this inning. This time called low to Jacoby Ellsbury. Hmm. Not the same spot as Salty's. Two on, two down. Dustin Pedroia has two hits tonight. A double and a single. He joins Kevin Euclid, who also has had a two hit night. Hit. Stopping at third base will be Punto. Red Sox have him loaded. And a single, a walk, and a base hit. After there were two outs in the inning, third hit of the night for Dustin Pedroia. Three for five tonight, a double and two singles for Pedroia. Playing it very cautious with the uh, score the way it is, not trying to get that run home. That is the first hit the Red Sox have had with runners in scoring position tonight. Does not produce a run, but. They're one for ten now with runners in scoring position in this game. Here's Adrian Gonzalez producing the Red Sox only run. Sack fly in the sixth inning. There's strike one. Fights it off foul and Gonzalez is down 0 and 2. Gonzalez staying alive, protecting the plate, slices it back into the seats. David Ortiz waiting on deck, two outs in the ninth. Gonzalez down the right field line. It is falling fair. Fair ball to the corner. In from third comes Punto. Ellsbury is behind him as Pedroia is coming around, but that is in the seats. And it'll send Pedroia back to third base. So it'll be second and third. Two runs in, though, for the Red Sox. And it'll now be seven to three. Well, the ball not exactly crushed by Gonzalez, but he's able to steer it. In fair territory down that right field line. The ball got in on him a little bit. It seemed like it jammed him. But he's able to keep it fair and pick up a couple of RBI. So after two strikeouts, the Red Sox are doing some business here in the ninth inning. And Francisco Cordero, who saw last night work the eighth inning, is up in the pen. Chuck Fairwood preferred not to have had to get him up. But Jansen has all of a sudden given up two runs and it's second and third with two outs. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be an easy inning. A couple of strikeouts to start off the ninth, and then Puto with the ground ball base hit, walk, base hit, double, two RBI. Now David Ortiz. Even with a big cut foul back to the screen. That swing there was designed to put three quick runs on the board. Big cut by Ortiz. Line 
foul. It's out of the way of Alex Ochoa. First base coach for the Red Sox and it's 0 2. Again, the Red Sox are down to their last strike. Pedroia is at third. Gonzalez at second. Two runs in here in the ninth. Something on the warning track in right center field. Uh, Tim McClellan has noticed, and a ball attendant will head out and grab it. Red Sox have scored 21 runs on the season. Eight have come in the ninth inning. They have been productive late. Just as the ball attendant had picked up whatever garbage was out there, there's more garbage that's come out onto the warning track now, but apparently they're going to let it go. Go to pitch to David Ortiz. Strike three call and the ball game is over. Red Sox get two runs in the ninth, but it's the Toronto Blue Jays who come away with a victory as they beat Boston seven to three. And Jerry, your thoughts on Daniel Bard tonight? Well, I thought he got better as the game went on. I think there was some nerves involved early in the ball game for him. And I think as time went through and he started to mix in some more sliders, some more change-ups, I thought he got better as the game gone on. All in all, I think okay. Final score is seven to three for Jerry Remy and Jack.